Hey, Pete Pikulski here, sales engineer with OnLogic. Today we're gonna to be taking a deeper look at the HX511. In my position, we work with spec sheets, product photos, all day long. But we find it's really no substitute by getting hands-on with the equipment and really understand what you're working with and what it's capable of. So we're gonna take a deeper dive and look at the different ports that you have available for I.O. and a little bit about the construction of this system to help you envision this in the solution that you're trying to build. So let's take a look. So here we are today. We're going to take a deeper look at the new HX511 from OnLogic. Really excited about this product because it rounds out our Helix line of industrial PCs. The real differentiator and why we're so excited about the HX511 um, is that we're going to have 12th gen Alder Lake series PS processors from Celeron up through i7. Additionally, the system supports dual channel DDR5 memory up to 64 gigabytes, ambient operating temperature 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, and 12 to 24 volt power via the four pin terminal block. Taking a look at the dimensions of the product, we have a very compact design, 8.96 inches deep, two inches tall, 6.79 inches wide. A uh, very solid piece of equipment. One of the first things that you'll notice when you're handling this device is that it's got some heft to it. Um, comes in at just a hair under five pounds and that's in large part due to this very uh, oversized machine heat sink that does a great job at keeping that 45 watt processor cool. Now let's take a closer look at the IO ports on the system. Here we got the terminal block connection and the terminal block supports input voltages 12 to 24 volts DC and has the ability to wire in an external momentary power switch. So if you were to mount this inside of an enclosure preventing you from accessing the power button on the front of the device you can cable out a remote power switch to the exterior of your enclosure, and there you can you know, use it like a standard PC button to reset the device, turn it off, turn it on, all without having to open it up and having direct access to the system. Continuing here from left to right, the next ports we see are two USB 3.2 ports capable of 10 gigabits per second. We have dual 2.5 gig LAN controllers. LAN one is actually the Intel i225LM, which supports out-of-band management. And your second LAN is also the i225, but it's the IT variant. Next two are two full-size DisplayPort 1.4 volt ports, which are capable of supporting MST hubs to run up to four independent displays. Uh, this is the DB9 connector and can be set up either configurable COM, uh, RS232, 422, 45, or dual CAN bus, depending on what selection you'd like to make. Uh, we flip over the system. On the top left, we have our 8-bit DIO. Below that, we have four USB 3.2 ports. And then moving right, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, since this is a development sample produced before we completed the Thunderbolt certification, they are labeled here as USB 4 on the sample. However, in production units, we'll show as the Thunderbolt label. Uh, Thunderbolt 4 is great. It's capable of supporting up to 40 gigabits per second or DisplayPort 2.0. So instead of using the MST hub, as I described, uh, with one of the full-size display ports on the rear of the system, uh, you can use a USB-C to DisplayPort adapter and have four independent displays, uh, you have two from the back, and then two utilizing these Thunderbolt ports in the front. Next, we have our external SIM card slot, which can be paired with an optional internal 4G modem. And then below that, we have our proprietary 32 pin, 32 pin terminal block, which adds three additional configurable COM ports. We have the pinout diagram in the user manual to assist you with wiring. Uh, or if you'd like, we can actually sell you a, a squid style DB9 connector to give you the form factor that you're, you're probably used to seeing. Now let's crack it open and take a look under the hood. Taking a closer look at the motherboard design, the optional COM, CAN, and DIO expansion options are all integrated into the board with a cableless design that boosts reliability and reduces the number of cables and components inside the system, aiding in the compact design. Expansion options, looking at the board and expansion slots here, here we have your M.2 E key for Wi-Fi, then your M.2 B key, which can be used as an optional 4G modem. It cables out to that external SIM, clot, SIM slot that we saw before. Uh, this slot can also support add-ins such as additional storage or other expansion cards that are supported by the PCIe X2 or USB protocols. Your primary storage drive will typically be placed here in the M.2 M key and supports either NVMe or SATA M.2 drives. Moving around the board, here's your terminal block power, USB, LAN, DisplayPort 1, and DisplayPort 2. And here's your dual channel memory, which is important for 12th Gen XE graphics, 
as it's required that you use both DIMMs to enable the XD graphics on the i5 and i7 processor variants. And on the other side, we have the four front USB 3.2 ports and your Multicom add-in card. One other notable feature about this device that you may have noticed, the processor is on the opposite side of the other components of the system. That's not typical of most motherboards. This allows us to more effectively connect the CPU to this massive heatsink that's also doing double duty as the top of the chassis and keep some of the other heat away from the other components on the board. So there you have it. Hope this video was helpful. If you want more information about the HX511 or any of our systems, please check out our website, onlogic.com. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.